Buongiorno e un saluto a tutti gli amici di TPC TV. Siamo qui all'Intel Future Showcase, quindi è la prima tappa italiana di un evento itinerante che porta a conoscere l'innovazione tecnologica dei laboratori Intel di Santa Clara in tutto il mondo. Questa è una delle cinque tappe europee che sono partite ad Amburgo, a Parigi e a Londra e che si concluderanno domani a Madrid. Per la prima volta Intel ha deciso di portare lo stato dell'arte delle tecnologie fuori dai loro laboratori di ricerca e sviluppo, fuori dai laboratori della Silicon Valley e oggi vogliamo invitare tutti voi a percorrere la spinta tecnologica, l'innovazione tecnologica, cominciando da quelle che sono le tecnologie già presenti oggi sul mercato, per poi proseguire con quelle che invece vedremo comparire nel circolo del prossimo anno e chiudere invece veramente con un'ondata di innovazione, con una finestra su quello che sarà il futuro dei prossimi cinque anni, parlando di vehicle infotainment, tecnologie per il mondo dei makers, tecnologie 3D e real sense. So what you have here is uh, all-in-one with a screen size of 20 inch that can play 4K videos. So as you can see, the screen is great. You get great performance because you got a Core i5 on these devices. It is made by Panasonic and it's very light as well. So if you take it in your hand, the wave is very, very light. So it's very cool, cool devices. And you can definitely imagine using it in your house sharing content with your friends or with your kids or watching great movies in, in 4K or playing games. So what you will find here is the technology at SIS we have been implementing with François Gabar. François Gabar is a seller that won the Vendée Globe uh, two years ago by breaking the record and François is trying to get boats as light as possible. So every device, is, electronic devices he has in his boat consume electricity that is produced by the fuel he has in his boat. So he's trying to get devices that consume less and less possible. So what you will have here is the device he's been using before that has been replaced by the device you have here on your right, which is an Intel Nuke. And basically, when you're using it, the power consumption is dropped by a factor of four, which means you will be able to take something like 25 or 30 liters of fuel less in a race like the, the Vendée Globe, because basically one watt is equal to one liter of fuel uh, when he's racing for close to, to 80 days. This is the, the software Francois is using while he's at sea. Uh, to know where to go, to know where the wind uh, is, to know where the, 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 the current <laughs> is. And it's the, the, really the device, I mean the software he's using while he's doing some, uh, some races. On the right hand side you see Intel Galileo which is a development platform for makers and hobbyists. It's Arduino compatible and it's a little larger. On the left hand side you see Intel Edison and Edison is really small. That's for more professional developers who'd like to build their own wearables or very small devices. This one is Intel Galileo connected to the cloud. Uh, so this Galileo board is connected to the internet and into the cloud and the same is true for this Asus um, phone pad and we're running an application on the phone pad that lets us control um, the LED strip from anywhere in the world because it's connected to the cloud and all it needs is an internet connection. Here we see the Basis Health Tracker, the Basis B1. Um, Basis is a company that Intel acquired about two months ago. We did this uh, to get intelligence into the wearable space so that we can build reference designs that we will then um, give our customers to enable them to build great wearable products based on Intel architecture. What we see here is the wireless charging bowl. It's a reference design and basically it has a coil inside which allows us to wirelessly charge all kinds of devices including cell phones. So if I put this in, it starts to charge. Uh, like this headset, if I put it in, it starts to charge and I can put in multiple devices at the same time. I don't have to worry to find the right cables. I just put it in here very conveniently and it will start to charge automatically. Here 
here you see uh, Jimmy the Robot, uh, which is basically a community approach to build your own personal toy robot. So Jimmy is a toy, it's not a professional robot. And uh, right now you can download the 3D files to print it on your own 3D printer. And as a next step, as you see on the video, uh, we will be helping you to integrate motors and intelligence. Uh, for example, intelligence based on the Intel Galileo board or Intel Edison into that robot. Hello, my name is John Tompkins. I'm with Intel Labs, and I'm here at the Intel Future Showcase showing our solar charging devices demo. What I'm showing is our Intel Education 2-in-1. This is a new platform available um, through Intel Education, and what's, what we have that's different about this particular platform is the ability for it to charge directly from a solar panel. So instead of charging it directly from the wall, like we're used to. This platform is the first to be available to charge directly from a small panel, such as this one. Plug directly into the back, place this in the, in the sun, and you'll be able to charge without additional batteries or any other uh, devices. And that enables this platform to be used anywhere in the world. Um, many areas of the world don't have grid power, outlet power like we're used to. So this is a, this is a positive step uh, for uh, Intel Education to be able to have a platform like this and make it available to education systems around the world. So I'm also showing the smart solar controller. This is a small device that we use um, to charge devices that don't have the alternative power architecture that's in the Intel Education 2-in-1. But in this platform, what we have is the ability to plug in a 100-watt solar panel. And on the front side of this, we're able to charge up to four of the Intel Classmate PCs, which is the, uh, the predecessor to the Intel Education 2-in-1 platform. This other device here is a research project that we're working on within the labs. This device works similar to the smart solar controller, but instead of just being limited to the Intel Classmate PC, it's able to detect what the power requirements are of the device being plugged into it and adapt so that uh, other devices within the classroom could be charged and used, uh, such as a projector or maybe a teacher's laptop or some other device that needs power. Hi, we believe the car of the future will have many factors to it. The car of the future will care about you. We believe the car of the future will be able to know who's in the car with it. We believe the car will be able to tell you your preferences, your tastes, your desires. We also believe the car of the future will be able to tell your emotional state and it will be able to communicate with infrastructure like the red lights, like knowing the speed limits. The car of the future will be able to authenticate with your phone or uh, with you as a person, your key, yourself as a key. So this is a demonstration that will show briefly what each of these components could be like in the future. So the first thing is, this is Jenna Kruger's car. This is a shared car program where somebody puts their car in a marketplace and then you can walk up to the car and use it for a while until they recall the car. So Jenna's car is up for use and we are going to go and borrow it. So we hit OK and what happens is our phone synchronizes with the data that's there. And we can put our phone away. It knows who I am. It takes all of our preferences and brings them to the car. So we're ready to go for a quick drive. Okay, we've started the engine and we're going to take off. First thing you'll notice is the car understands the infrastructure speed. So it knows that 35 is the speed limit in this area. When we come to the red light and stop, you notice the light is red and we have a countdown timer. The countdown timer tells us how long the light is going to be red. So three, two, one, and then green. So now we can go ahead and go. Now the car of the future should be able to listen and understand what is important to you as well. So I am waiting for an email from Dr. Michaels because I had blood work done and I'm waiting for the lab results.
Okay, the light's green, so we'll continue on down here. Okay, you'll see that the email, a notification has come in that the, the, the email from Dr. Michaels came in, but notice it does not show me the email because it's not the appropriate time. It's not a good time to see the email. However, there's a red light coming up. The car has detected that one is far enough ahead and I can just go ahead and come up to this red light. And when I get to this red light, I can stop and see the email at the time when it's safe. So now you see the countdown timer tells me almost 20 seconds and it does shows me uh, the email that's appropriate in the appropriate time. Now also you can see that these are lab results from the doctor. Call for an appointment as soon as you can. And this would kind of make me upset. Why do I need to call in? Is it something bad? Good? And so I'm emotionally charged. And so when I accelerate heavily now, the car will not respond the same way. The car of the future will care about me and not let me drive erratically. So the car of the future also cares about the infrastructure. Ambulances, fire trucks, police cars, and maybe even school buses that are in the area. And so it is giving us a notification that way ahead there is a school bus. And it will give us an option to reroute and go around. How many minutes for each option is also given. And so I'm going to take you straight through because I want to show you something else. If the infrastructure was smart enough to understand this, it could also understand that there's a school bus that's stopped. And the, car, the school bus could kind of invoke the car to stop by itself so that you couldn't accidentally drive through a bunch of children going across the street. So now as soon as the school bus releases it, then the infrastructure would tell you that you could go ahead and, and keep going. Now I have a daughter, and uh, her name is Steph. And it looks like Steph is calling me. Okay, so the car understood that A, Steph is my daughter, B, she's done with her practice, and C, that she's starving, she wants to eat something. So the car already is communicating with her, knowing where she is and knowing where we are, where is a good place to kind of meet together. And so where it's convenient and where it's also safe. The other thing it's doing in the background is it's looking for places to eat that both of us like, that's convenient in this area, and that might be the right price. So it's determined where we're gonna meet and right here we have a representation of where she is. So we're going to stop real quick and she's gonna get in the car. So she's gonna get in and her device is gonna synchronize. And notice that her music is on our console media play player right now. And then we also have her call list and the things that she's interested in looking at on her phone but it also has a map that she can look at and she can interact with that keeps us distracting from distracting the driver now she likes the creamery so she's going to hit the creamery and hit the share button Oop, let's do that again share button now what that does is it brings over onto the driver's side the creamery and allows me to select this button as the driver I can hit the reroute, and what that does now is it sets the, the coordinates in the, in, the, in the car so that it can start looking for parking spaces for this place that we've decided to go to. Now, this car is, again, not ours. It's Jenna's, and Jenna has issued a recall for her car. She wants it back. Now the car has a dilemma. I need to go to the creamery, but I also need to go to wherever Jenna is, and so it's looking for an appropriate parking spot. And so now we have two spots here that it, it is found. One is free within three minutes parking, and the other one is uh, paid parking and then it, that's metered. And it's looking for parking spots that, again, will meet both Jenna's and our needs. So the car cares about us, and it cares about her as well. So the parking location was selected by the car because we did nothing and the selection number one was good enough. 
and we'll come up here and you can see on this screen right here that it's not exactly where uh, we wanted to go. We wanted to go to the creamery, but it's close enough for both Jenna and for us. So what we feel like the car of the future will care about you, it'll care about your tastes, your preferences, it'll be able to customize for you, it'll be able to understand your, the environment, what's being said, what, um, what emotions are being had, and also um, it'll just be able to be safer, a safer driving experience. So that's kind of what we see as the personal vehicle experience of the future. Hi, my name is Scott Dwyer. I'm with uh, the RealSense team at Intel, and we're in Milan showing the Intel Future Showcase, some of the uh, amazing new technology we're working on in the lab. The first thing we're showing off is our hand tracking technology. We're actually tracking 22 joints on the hand uh, to enable users to interact with their PC applications in a, a way that they already understand, which is using their hands. So users can gesture, they can grab onto objects, or they can use their entire hand uh, as part of a game or an application. Again, in an effort to make interacting with your computer easier than just using the computer or mouse and making it natural and intuitive. So we call this the floating display, and this is what happens when you have 3D output, which is this uh, uh, projected image right here, and 3D input, which is possible with the Intel RealSense 3D camera. And this enables some really interesting natural uh, interactions. Like this, for example, there are buttons on the screen. Um, a user sees buttons and they want to just reach out and touch them, and we make that possible. Again, this is uh, all in an effort to make interacting with the PC natural and intuitive and ultimately just fun and delightful for the user. This is a simple drawing application. Uh, I'm reaching out into mid-air here and I'm using my fingers to draw some colorful patterns on the screen. So this is the Intel RealSense 3D camera and this is uh, what gives your computer a human-like eye that can understand distance and depth. And the, the point here is that it, it enables you, uh, your computer to understand you as a human and also objects around it. So for example, one thing that we can do is take a real-life object, like what we've done here, uh, we can show it to the computer, rotate it around, and then build a 3D model of that object. Now, once you've got a 3D model of an object, you can do some quick edits, and then you can either share it, or you can 3D print the object. So, the, uh, the scanning technology enables you to take the real world and make it virtual, and then the printing technology lets you make that virtual world and then make it real again.